We begin three years after previous events, at the end of Fimblewinter, a period of extreme environmental changes throughout several of the nine realms which make up the Norse world, with Kratos, the former Greek god of war, and his teenage son, Atreus, known also by his Jotnar, or giant's given name, Loki, as he's half-giant from his now-deceased mother, Lafe, or Fey, a Jotun warrior from the Jotunheim realm of giants. While returning to their home in the Midgard realm after hunting, the duo are forced to fend off an ambush from a vengeful Freya, also known as Frigg, a Norse Vanir goddess of the Vanaheim realm, former queen of the Valkyries, a group of elite, winged female warriors, and ex-wife of Odin, Norse Aesir god, king of the Asgard realm, and ruling all father of the Nine Realms, due to her seeking revenge against Kratos and Atreus for killing her son, Baldur, the Aesir god of light, in previous events. Upon arriving home, they find Fenrir, one of their sick, elderly wolves, in his final moments of life. And after he dies, Kratos witnesses a mysterious light emerge from his corpse, shortly before Atreus undergoes a transformation into a wild bear, due to a combination of his grief and still uncontrolled giant magic, briefly battling his father before regaining his senses. Afterward, Thor, Aesir god of thunder, eldest son of Odin, half-giant, wielder of the legendary hammer weapon Mjolnir, and father of Modi, Aesir god of courage, and Magni, Aesir god of force, both of whom Kratos and Atreus also killed in previous events, arrives at the duo's home fulfilling a past vision Atreus had, and is joined by Odin, who proposes to leave them both alone if Atreus abandons his secret search for Tyr, the peaceful Aesir god of war. Kratos refuses, causing Thor to force him into a duel, which ends in a stalemate, while Odin tells Atreus that he'll leave his father alone if Atreus comes to Asgard. With the aid of the Holdra brothers, Brock and Sindri, a pair of dwarven blacksmiths who assist Kratos and Atreus with gear and realm travel, the duo, along with the decapitated and reanimated head of Mimir, the smartest man alive and their loyal travel companion, who provides them with knowledge and counsel on their journeys, take refuge in Sindri's house on the branches of the World Tree, Yggdrasil, in the Realm Between Realms. Atreus admits to Kratos that he and Sindri have been secretly re-examining the giant's mural shrine scattered throughout Midgard, searching for clues regarding Tyr's whereabouts. After determining that Tyr is alive and imprisoned in the industrial dwarven realm of Svartalfheim, Kratos reluctantly agrees to help Atreus, if only to gain his assistance in preventing Ragnarok, a prophesized apocalypse, and they proceed to travel to and rescue the imprisoned and traumatized Tyr. Returning with Tyr to Sindri's house, they encounter Ratatoskr, a large talking squirrel who tends to Yggdrasil, assisted by the spectral aspects of his personality, which he's removed from himself. Bitter, encountered in previous events, arrogant, anxious, and perfectionist. The group then heads to the elven realm of Alfheim, visiting the shrine of Groa, the giant seeress who prophesied Ragnarok, in hopes of better understanding it. Fighting against both the elves and Tyr's newfound pacifism, the group learns of an alternate prophecy to Ragnarok, one in which only Asgard is destroyed, but all other realms survive under a new champion, implied to be Atreus, identified as Loki in the prophecy, which leads to an argument between Kratos and Atreus over his supposed destiny when they return to Sindri's house. While sleeping that night, Atreus unintentionally transports himself to Jotunheim using giant magic, where he awakens and meets the giantess Angraboda, who shows him a mural that seemingly foretells Kratos' death in Ragnarok, along with Atreus joining Odin. Atreus also learns that the giants transferred their souls into magical, marble-like soul stones in order to evade Odin's wrath. Atreus is then entrusted with the remaining soul stones by Angraboda, and uses one of them to transfer a giant soul into the soulless body of a snake, before helping to stop Angraboda's grandmother, Gryla, from stealing any more animal souls to experience their memories. Afterward, Atreus returns to Midgard, where Kratos angrily informs him that he's been missing for two days, before they are again attacked by Freya, using her Valkyrie powers. However, Freya ceases attacking after Kratos shields her from Atreus, and agrees to spare Kratos if he helps her to break the curse Odin placed upon her, which binds her to Midgard. Taking the form of a falcon to circumvent Odin's spell, Freya travels with Kratos, Mimir, and Brock to Vanaheim, where her strange brother, Freyr, is leading a resistance group against Odin. As they travel, Kratos opens up to Freya about the deaths of his first family in Greece, attempting to counsel her on the emptiness of revenge. Upon killing Neathog, the giant mythical dragon protecting Yggdrasil's roots, within which Odin entwined the curse, and afterward breaking it, Freya admits that she can neither forgive nor kill Kratos for killing her son, and the two make amends. Back at Sindri's house, Kratos and Atreus have another argument regarding his recently deceitful behavior, ending in Atreus fleeing to Asgard alone, seeking to find a way to prevent his father's death. Atreus has a hostile encounter with Heimdall, Aesir god of foresight, but is saved by Thor and Odin who requests his help in preventing Ragnarok by reassembling an ancient mask that can supposedly allow its wearer to safely look into the mysterious rift of creation, gaining infinite knowledge without losing an eye, as Odin did. 
Meanwhile, seeking to reclaim Atreus, Kratos has Freya and Mimir lead him to the Norns, the three Norse fates, Earth of the past, Verdandi of the present, and Skuld of the future, who claim that Heimdall is destined to kill Atreus. In response, Kratos and Brock reforge the Dropnir, a legendary ring which has the magical ability to infinitely replicate itself into the powerful Dropnir spear, capable of overwhelming Heimdall's foresight ability, which allows him to predict his opponent's movements by enabling Kratos to instantly create and throw an endless amount of spears at him, preventing him from dodging them all. Elsewhere, Atreus searches for pieces of the mask in Helheim, the realm of the dead, with Thor's daughter, Thrud, during which they accidentally release the giant, soulless, immortal wolf, Garm, who begins tearing holes in the realms, allowing Hellwalkers, or undead warriors, to wreak havoc. Atreus reunites with Kratos, and together they attempt to stop Garm and are forced to fight him, during which Atreus realizes that he accidentally bound Fenrir's soul to his knife when the wolf died, explaining the mysterious light that Kratos saw, and resurrects Fenrir by transferring his soul into Garm's body. Now reconciled, Kratos and Atreus return to Sindri's house, where Atreus shares his knowledge of the mask with the rest of the group, but the discussion is postponed when they learn that Freyr was captured by the Aesir. Kratos, Atreus, Mimir, and Freya return to Vanaheim to rescue Freyr, during which Kratos is forced to battle and kill Heimdall, along with his mount, Ghoultopper, before claiming Gjallarhorn. The magical horn prophesies to signal the start of Ragnarok, which allows simultaneous access from all realms to the otherwise restricted Asgard, with the only other known method of entry being Odin's numerous magical ravens, including Hugin and Munin. While Freya recovers after his rescue, Kratos reluctantly allows Atreus to infiltrate Asgard in order to finish reassembling the mask, before sealing it from Odin, which he succeeds in doing, teleporting back to Sindri's house just before Thor kills him. Atreus then gives the mask to Tyr, who unexpectedly agrees to fight, before revealing that he knows of a secret way to Asgard. Brock, suspicious of Tyr's abrupt change of heart, suddenly realizes that Tyr addressed Atreus as Loki, the name which the Asgardians primarily call him by, leading Tyr to fatally stab Brock, before revealing that he's been Odin in disguise the entire time. The group manages to drive Odin away and retrieve the mask, but a grief-stricken Sindri blames Atreus for Brock's death, having brought the fake Tyr there in the first place, and abandons the group to mourn. Atreus and Kratos commit to start Ragnarok in order to stop Odin, entering the fiery realm of Muspelheim to help Surtur, a fire giant who lives there, achieve a destined primordial form that will destroy Asgard. Under Kratos' leadership, the united forces of the other realms gather at Tyr's temple in Midgard, where Kratos sounds Gjallarhorn, beginning the Siege of Asgard. Initially, the battle proceeds poorly. The entry points from the other realms are quickly severed, the elves and Vanir struggle against Asgard's defenses, Sindri arrives alone, without dwarven reinforcements, in an attempt to prevent any more dwarves from dying, and the army is forced to rescue innocent Midgardian refugees from the uncontrollable Surtur. However, the tide turns when Angerboda arrives with Fenrir and the snake which Atreus previously imbued a giant soul into, now fully grown into Jormungandr, the World Serpent, who battles Thor in retaliation for his past massacre of giants, while Thrud and her mother, Sif, defect after discovering Odin used the refugees as a barrier of living shields against the invaders, before Sindri destroys Asgard's war machines and massive, protective wall. Thor uses Mjolnir's power to send Jormungandr back in time to the past, removing him from the fight, before once again engaging in battle with Kratos, who defeats and convinces him to stay undown, choosing to be better for their children's sake, only to then be killed by Odin for disobeying him. Odin then attacks Kratos and Atreus, ultimately binding them with magic that restricts their movement, before Freya appears and does the same to him, leading him to break the ground beneath all of them to free himself, causing the entire group to fall into Odin's underground lair. Now next to the rift, Atreus decides to break apart the mask instead of using it, which causes the rift to absorb it before disappearing, enraging Odin, who then uses all of his magical abilities in a final attempt to destroy the group. After a fierce battle, the group manages to overpower and defeat Odin, who remains unrepentant, causing Atreus to seal his soul away inside of an empty soul stone, before eventual Sindri reappears and smashes it to pieces. As Surtur destroys Asgard, Freyr and his sentient magical sword, Ingrid, sacrifice themselves to ensure everyone else escapes through a rift made by Angraboda and Fenrir. After the siege, Atreus reunites with Angraboda in Midgard, who shows him and Kratos a mural, which reveals that Fae had deliberately destroyed another shrine mural the duo discovered in Jotunheim during previous events, preventing them from seeing it, thereby allowing them to determine their own fate. Atreus resolves to find the other surviving giants, a journey he feels he must undertake alone, and so bids farewell to Kratos and Angraboda before departing. Further examining the mural, Kratos discovers another mural hidden on the opposite side, which shows a prophesized depiction of him as a beloved, guardian god, who is worshipped and revered by all. Finally hopeful about his future, Kratos rejoins Freya and Mimir, with the trio together departing in order to help rebuild and restore peace throughout the realms. 
They proceed to destroy the remaining Einryar, or warriors who died honorable deaths and were reanimated, from the sections of Asgard which landed into the other realms during its destruction, before defeating and killing the vengeful Valkyrie Queen Gana, which Freya does reluctantly, thereby reclaiming her title. The Aesir relocate to Vanaheim and finally achieve peace with the Vanir there, Thrud finds and takes up Mjolnir in honor of Thor, and the trio discover and free the real Tyr from an Asgardian prison which landed in Niflheim, the realm of fog also containing the Raven Tree, which houses the souls of Odin's spy ravens, revealed to be fashioned by his trusted servant, the Raven Keeper, from children's souls. Afterward, the trio attend a funeral for Brock and Svartalfheim alongside a few other dwarves, including Sindri, who still hasn't forgiven them for his death.